I'm Eric Gibbons, the author of the Advanced Art Students Workbook and the Advanced Art Teachers Workbook. The main difference between the two is the Teacher's Edition, you're allowed to make copies, and it includes 20 benchmark exams in the back, and a little bit more project information to spur on some ideas. The Students Workbook is intended for uh, advanced students who are beyond Arts 1 and 2, um, but not quite ready for AP Art, though it could be used in an AP situation. The idea is that I've done it as a choice-based historical approach to art education and I'm using one of my actual students workbooks to kind of show you how this sort of works. So we've got our table of contents of course, a word about self-censorship um, so they know what's school appropriate and what's not so you have a discussion with them about that. And then a lot of the book is just documentation so we have all the different media requirements for the year to make sure that they go through ink, watercolor, acrylics, graphite, etc. When they do a project, they put in what is the description of the project, and then I make initials to show that they have done that media by the end of the year. I've um, organized the book by historical movement from the Byzantine uh, art all the way through op art, so they kind of check as they go to see which ones they have already explored. And then I have three requirements by the end of the year that they have a self-portrait, still life, and an observational project when they completed it, and then I sign that they got that done by the end of the year. The beginning of the book um, starts out with your schools of art from Byzantine all the way through op art with some quick synopsis of each. And then another page for uh, quick ideas of projects that could be done in those different schools. And then this is where they actually pick one and start to explore it. So she picked Gothic for her first movement to explore, the dates, defining it. She found four famous works of Gothic art, uh, the years and the artists. Uh, what do they have in common, what specific themes or techniques came out of this movement, and then three ideas of what they could do based on that historical movement. And then this was her image of a Madonna as Weird Al Yankovic, um, and so they do a sketch there, and then they would go uh, later on in the book, so here's the one for that particular project. Um, so we have again the historical movement of Gothic, what is the concept that they've picked out of the three ideas. Uh, how, is it, how is their work connected to that particular movement? Um, giving it a title, we have our intro date, and then different sorts of dates for completing, sketching, transferring designs, uh, and then our deadlines. Then this stays open at their seat every couple of days, and I initial how far along they are with the project. So if I see a student at 40% three times in a row, I know that they're not progressing. Um, so this kind of keeps them in check they can be independent, but then I can also verify what it is they're doing. I have a universal rubric uh, that's a, next to each project, so we're grading them on the elements and principles of design, craftsmanship and neatness, time and management, originality, execution and uniqueness, and then the requirements and depth for that particular project. Uh, throughout the book, there are additional helper pages for students so that we can talk about color bias, paintbrush care, plaster work, um, coming up with icons for different projects, grids that they can put plastic on top of and trace the grid, so if they want to do a gridded portrait they can, um, some information to remind them about perspective, uh, shading, face proportions, body proportions, and then we do these art quotes every Monday for the first few minutes of class. They read a famous quote about an artist, um, or about art in general, and then they write down their interpretation of what it means. We have a quick discussion, and then we go on with our regular project. So that gets them reading, interpreting, and writing every week. Uh, and then we have our color vocabulary, sample tests, principles of design. I even have a report that they're going to do later on in the year where they pick an artist who's dead and interview them as if they're re reanimated as a zombie. So that way everything has to be written in first person which gets rid of a lot of problems with um, plagiarism. And then there's even a rubric to grade those reports. So again, this has everything from uh, soup to nuts uh, to get your students working as independently as possible, kind of making their own choices, but then there's a lot of concrete information that's gonna be helpful throughout the year, from video notes pages, um, you know, analyzing works and uh, masterworks, we even have 180 sketchbook ideas that they can pick from. Some of those can become projects. 
and critiquing pages. Then we have lesson suggestions by School of Art. So I give more detailed ideas than what was in the beginning of the book. The beginning was kind of a thumbnail. These become far more detailed. All right. So uh, I found this to be very helpful with my advanced students. Kind of keeps them on task, gives them the freedom to choose what they need to do. And again, it is available and it teaches addition.